Hey guys, guess what? I'm not a very good keyboard player. And if you've heard any of my music, you probably already know that. Uh, but what I'm going to show you in this video is how I use some tools in Reaper to uh, actually get my MIDI ideas into Reaper without having to play it in uh, a million times until I get it right, or playing it once badly and then quantizing it and spending more time correcting things than actually uh, playing and getting more musical ideas out. So the first is MIDI step input. Really simply, it's a MIDI input mode that doesn't use the mouse and uh, doesn't require going into a recording mode. Uh, so you actually input the notes while stopped using your MIDI keyboard. I'm going to put in a empty MIDI item here. I'm just going to command drag that out. So I've got my MIDI item and on this track it's going to be a hi-hat sound. So I'm going to double click that to open up the editor. So I have a button on my MIDI toolbar already set up for enabling uh, step input, but I'll show you where you actually find the action. It's in the action list. So once you have the MIDI editor open, there's a separate section of the app action list just for the MIDI editor. So you can find that right there if you don't already have that open. But anyways, we're going to look for a step input. And it's an option here, MIDI inputs as step input mode. So I'm going to run that. I will turn that on or off. Anytime I hit my keyboard, it's going to input a note wherever the play cursor is, or the edit cursor. So we can still audition our sounds. I know that I need quite a high note to get this right. Oh, I forgot to enable my track for record arm. So I can input this. I have my grid set to eighth notes. All right, and that was one too many, but we can just trim that and we're all good. So what this takes is the velocity values and that's it, just velocity. Let's make sure that this item is selected and we can now loop this. Okay, so that sounds like a hi-hat, kind of. And let's just do this a little bit different. Let's try a like a triplet hi-hat. And let's do the exact same thing. Um, let's tap this in. And obviously, that's rather tedious for uh, certain things. And I definitely made those last two notes loud because of that. But for things like arpeggios, uh, you'll see later on that this is this can be a lot easier. Just kind of select all those and delete them again, and this will be the last example of this. Let's say we skip the first beat, and I I just move over using my arrow keys, like that. And then the next note that is input will be um, with the keyboard, right? So it's like that. And that's probably the worst example out of all of them. But anyways, that's that's the MIDI step input. I highly recommend that you put that onto a, a toolbar. I will show you the same thing, but with a uh, keyboard sound. So let's, I want, what do I want? Let's turn this couple octaves down. Yeah, so I have my time selection already here. I can go to insert and new MIDI item. And fortunately I had the wrong track selected. Insert new MIDI item. Did the wrong button again. Insert new MIDI item. And bring our play cursor back to the beginning. So I'm going to play something like that. Uh, that's an eighth note straight.
All right, so there we go. That's our uh, bass keyboard. All right, so the next way that I like to input MIDI is by quantizing it on the input. So we're going to right click on the record enable button. We're looking for this track recording settings, input quantize format, etc. That brings up this window and we're gonna have one of these windows for each track. Uh, so these settings are per track. And I've already done some recording with this option earlier in the project. So this is already enabled, quantize track uh, MIDI recording and it's on 16th notes, and I quantize the note offs as well, and I just do it 100%, and, and for this stuff that I'm recording, it's totally fine to do it like that. Uh, if you want it less quantized, experiment with these settings. I know that I'm bad at playing my keyboard, so I need something like this. Once again, this is something that's really handy to have on a toolbar. I have this button here on my main toolbar, and that brings up that window. Uh, for whatever track is selected. Okay, hope that makes sense. So yeah, I'm just going to, I don't know, even know what I'm going to play. And it's going to stop and it's going to keep the last take and I can crop to that take. So the first take, the empty one isn't used. All right, so that quantize was a little bit off, especially here. Right, so it I played it a little too early on this uh, fourth note here and which is actually good because then I can show you if we open up the quantize window. Um, if we change the strength slider, have this selected, change the strength slider, then it, it shows us the original and we can click on bypass and it shows us the original. So uh, even though we have this setting to quantize uh, track MIDI, it's actually non-destructive. Like most things in Reaper, it's non-destructive. We can reverse that. So the original MIDI is like that, and the corrected MIDI is like that. These features are kind of hidden, so I want to bring your attention to these things. Uh, they help me out a lot. I'm a terrible musician, so uh, they really help. And that's it for this video. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter. Support the Reaper blog through Patreon and visit reaperblog.net for a lot more tutorials. Mm -hmm.